we managed. You were there. Well, it's that time of year again. Spring barley is going in. We're making a start down the odd fellas. And here's the first proper look at the new drilling setup. I said in previous videos when I was introducing the TM, I was gonna get a free meat power hour, build a clevis for it, and use the swan neck that I got when I bought the drill. And this is going to be our new way of drilling, certainly this year and possibly next. So, I haven't actually tested it yet, you've literally just seen me lump the seed in it. And uh, I just need to double check a few things and then uh, I'm going to start the other side of the field. But um, yeah, there's nothing special about this at all really. This is um, an idea that came about in the 80s I think. You know, everybody had a Massey 30 drill, everybody had a power hammer, everybody put a swan neck on them, if they uh, had a big enough tractor for it. So, this is the original style of combination drill. So, we're going to see how it goes, I'm going to take my time with it, and uh, yeah, a bit exciting, a bit nervous, but I just want to double check the drill. Make sure all the pipes are connected in the right place, make sure the settings are right, and uh, off we go. But all I've really had to do to make this work is, I've welded on this drawbar effectively, and extended the pipes by two metres here. Um, oh, and extended the cables. Now I've got a nice Deutz plug, which makes that nice and easy to disconnect when I uh, need to tow it down the road again. But if we look here, the drill set to seven, which is what my notes there and the note the other side told me that it needs to be set to again. The concaves are set to two, which is what they were last year. So within a little, we're ready to go. Uh, one concave on the end there isn't right. This is why you check. It's set to three for some reason. It should be on two. That was easy. Um, double check. Yeah, some of these boots um, have been changed since last year as well. They've just started perishing in the shed. So I think if I'm running this again next year, I'll probably order half the amount of boots and uh, pipes because um, there was quite a few this year that needed changing. I bet you by uh, spring next year, I want to be more again. But. Uh, yeah, I think they're all connected. They're all set to two. Got the rake down at the back. So this is going to be a little bit interesting for doing corners. I don't know how well we're going to manage them, but we've got the bulk of the field to worry about first. But if you look at my notes here, spring barley, seven for the gauge at the front, 14 tooth, the gears in the side there, they haven't changed and two on the concave, so we are now ready to rock and roll and uh, start putting some seed in. Just so you know what I've just done, Dad's coincidentally just come as I've set in and uh, brought me a scotch egg because he's good like that. 
Um, I've raised the power hour out because we don't want to be too deep because it's just wasteful on what we're trying to do here because we're just trying to tickle tops as well as I've brought the depth ram out on the Massey because this is this this is the difference between having a tractor in front to do a power hour and then bringing another tractor over the 4610 would compact the soil in front of the drill just enough so now that this is going straight after a power hour which is straight into fluffy like soil with no further compaction it's going deeper we've actually got the seeds about two inches deep and we only really want it about an inch so I brought the ram out I'm gonna have another go we'll see how it goes also I need to get over a little bit because I am just touching that edge so we'll carry on Let's have a look how far we are with the seed. Oh my goodness, we still have loads. We have used hardly any. Cool. I can't remember how much this little field took. Don't know. Hello and welcome back to day two of my spring drilling campaign. I am, uh, you know, a day wiser with the new setup, and uh, as you might have seen from the end of that time lapse, uh, I stopped and started taking panels off the drill. What happened was um, I put the depth frame in at the lowest position, me meaning that it was in, in its fleetest position, so the discs weren't cutting in as deep. Because I think I mentioned in yesterday's video. By having it um, so fluffy directly in front of the drill with no compaction, the drill's just going straight in. And what you end up having is, let me knock the revs off a sec. What you end up having is the, um, the seed's too deep, basically. So I put it in the deep, the lowest hole, making it the highest position the discs can be. And what that was doing was, the way that the drive engages on the drill is, as the the bar, hang on, the bar goes in, I'll just show you quick, as that twists, down the side there, there's a rod that shoves a gear into, 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 um, into position with the, drop, with the land wheel, so what it was doing, because it was in that lowest position, that rod 
when it pushed in, didn't quite, on that, on the left hand side, didn't have enough room to quite reach into mesh. So we were only using half the drill. So after that as well, the GoPro um, decided it didn't want to record anymore. It's got this funny thing, if I get below 50% battery and want to start a new recording, it keeps turning itself off and I have no idea why. So that's something to look into. So we're a little bit phone footage today. Hopefully putting a bit of charge into the GoPro will sort it out, but we shall see. Maybe it needs a software update or something silly. But uh, like I said, a day wiser with my new setup and uh, reversing into corners feels very satisfying. I mean, I'm a bit slowed down now because I'm knocking the revs off for the camera. But if we knock it in about here, so I've got the rear rake up, back it into this corner, set the power in, and I know I'm going over a little bit again, but it's just so that I'm making sure, well actually, we'll get the marker up because we don't need that down. Right, there we are. I do like my little switch box. That was a handy idea last year. Anyway, re-engage again, we've got no marker in. And as we draw forward, just drop the rake back in. And then we'll finish off this little headland because I've done fairly tight up here. You can see where I've been in and out. I did that run on the way to do this headland here. And then uh, I'd already done along this edge. So I'm a little bit dr double drilling again but it means that everything's done. So now we've got this little short headland to do and then I've got one run along that hedge and then that's this field done. But it is a funny old day because it was spitting this morning and I got a bit disheartened because I thought, oh, it won't go. But there's little spots of rain and you can constantly see the spots of rain, but it doesn't do anything. The soil's in really good condition to be drilling. So, make of that what you will. But I'm coming to the end now, so I'm going to put you guys down. I've just finished up the far end headland, but would you look at all of that? Pahara's from the early 90s, and the drill's from the 70s. Not a scratch on that, look at that. Well, chuffer all that, look at that.